Hello and welcome everyone. I welcome you to my YouTube channel Z Network Lessons and also to this course of Cisco AC Zero to Hero. And before beginning this lecture, I would request you all if you have not subscribed to my channel, kindly do subscribe to my channel and share my channel and the videos with everybody else. So let's move on to the topic today. The topic today we have is the failover which is also called the uh, HA. So let me grab my pen. So in my previous video, we have talked about redundancy. And what we did was interface level redundancy, which was called as redundant interface. And then we did the port channel for redundancy. But these two were for the interface level, right? This were this was for interface. Level. Now for box level redundancy, we have the concept of failover. And we have two types: active, active, and active standby. And then you have the second one, active standby. And then also we have the clustering. So these all are license based. So you should have license to work on with the uh, active standby, active active cluster. So today what we are going to do is active standby. And let's first of all discuss what is active standby. So. So in this I mean, scenario, just imagine you have, okay, first of all, let's imagine a simple uh, topology that like you have your LAN here and you have your PCs, clients, whatever is are connected here on this LAN. And then you have the AC as a firewall, this one, yeah, going to outside internet, just basic design. What, ha what if this firewall fails? So there's a single point of failure here. So what you do in, instead uh, to, of having a single firewall, you can have double firewall like this, and then you can connect these two, and then also you can connect these two like this. So now you have a, a redundancy with the box level, but as of now, what we are doing is active standby. So just to understand with the active standby, it is just like the redundant interfaces, but it is on the box level. So you do have a backup, but that will not be active all the time. It is called as hot spare, or you can say hot standby. So what happens is it, it sits there, sits there waiting for the active firewall to fail active firewall to fail. Once the active fails, this becomes the active. Okay, as simple as that. And with respect to your um, LAN users, the default gateway will not be changing because if you just think about it, so for example, you have a, a gateway of say 1.100 and you just think that 1.100 is this guy and this is like dot 200, this is an example. So I have pointed my default gateway to 100. What if this guy dies, right? This person, this F5 goes offline, then what about the LAN users? So the failover takes care of this, of this as this dot 100 is not actually assigned to this interface it is assigned to the interface of the active firewall. So when you configure it, you don't configure on the interface, you configure and point it to the active firewalls inside interface, which you will name it. You will see that. And then, uh, I mean, this uh, failover happens, the standby that becomes the active will take over as dot handle. And then he will be answering to the request from the LAN side. So that's how 
this uh, gateway need not to be changed. And with respect to the client users, I mean the, the LAN users, this failover will be transparent. So they will not be knowing that uh, a huge, I mean, um, fail uh, failover happened on the on the firewalls. Yeah. So that's how it is. And then uh, I want you to understand about this failover LAN interface and failover link interface. But before that, I want to uh, I want you to understand some terminologies. Uh, one is active, and second one is standby. Third is primary, and the fourth one is secondary. So what is active? Active is the box that is currently forwarding. It is a role. The box that is active is actually forwarding the data. The standby is again a role, which is acting as the hot spare or the standby. It's, it's just waiting there for the actor to fail. But primary, primary has nothing to do with active or standby. Primary is, if you think about it, it's just a name or, or you can say it's a priority. So when you specify in the configuration that this box is primary, that means it's uh, pr it's priority and it will it will take over as active. Yeah, and secondary again name and priority. So whichever box you name is secondary will become the standby. Simple as that, right? So just to um, I mean again explain this. So this box is primary. This box is secondary. So what will happen when the um, when this uh, setup will come up is this will be active and this will be standby. Yeah, but what will happen when the active box goes down? So this role, right, this box went down, this role be will be taken over by the standby. Okay, this will come up as active and this will be the standby now but it will still be the primary. So it's like primary standby and secondary active. So there is nothing uh, related to the forwarding uh, related to the name of primary and secondary. So this is like secondary will be the active. And always remember all the configurations are done on the active firewall no matter if it's primary or secondary, it should be the active firewall where you have to do the configurations and all the configurations are uh, synchronized, synchronized using the failover link interface, failover, uh, sorry, failover LAN interface. Okay, so all the config configuration synchronization is done over the failover LAN interface and also the heartbeats, you can say the keep lives are shared through the uh, heartbeats or keep lives are shared through the failover LAN interface. And what about this link interface? So link interface helps us in a sense. Uh, okay, so you must have heard about this state less or stateful. If you have gone through my previous videos, you should know about this. But if not, just to say, what is stateless and stateful? With respect to firewall, it's nothing but, but connection tables. Connection information or connection table. So if you keep the connect, connection information, it is called stateful. If you don't keep the connection information, it is called stateless. So this, Payload link is used for the connection information to sync over between both the boxes. So if you don't configure this failover link interface, then this would be a, a, a stateless failover setup. But if you configure this uh, failover link, then the connections from this ASA1 will be sent to ASA2. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the LAN devices that you have here, they don't have to uh, 
to go on and again create the sessions. So that session table will be available on ASA two. Once that ASA one fails, uh, the uh, um, the client can go via ASA two without any uh, drops. Yeah. But then again, if you don't have this, then once the ASA goes down in in with respect to the stateless, once the ASA one goes down, then these uh, LAN devices will be disconnected and they have to initiate the traffic again. So that is the case. I will be demonstrating to you all this, but just to understand that failover LAN interface and failover link interface. The difference: failover LAN interface does the config replication, config replication, and okay, sorry, replication and heartbeats or keep alive. Yeah, and once again. the failover link interface is res responsible for connection table synchronization yeah so that is there and i mean initially what you do you go to both the um asa devices and configure uh, the primary secondary and the ip address of these uh interfaces and then later on when you have to configure the actual ip address of the inside and the outside and the dmz that you have to do only on the active firewall once this a uh, failover is a uh, uh, i mean kind of configured and they are into sync then you have to do every configuration on the active device and automatically it will be uh, replicated on the secondary device or the standby device or the secondary the standby device yeah so that was the theory part now let's go and configure this on the 